in my competition. It's not an issue, it's cotton tissue. Uh, unconventional, controversial, convoluted, unconditional, undeterred and undisputed. Good morning. Good morning. It is time to stick the BS. It's time for Undisputed. It's time in just a few minutes to talk Coach Cal called by the Hogs. Anthony Davis's eye injury, nothing to blink at. Is there a doc in the house for the Bucks? And Bronny now expected to go back to school, really? But first up, I say good morning to Keyshawn Johnson and especially to Rachel Nichols. Thank Welcome you, back. Morning Great there, to Skip. Have you. How are you, sir? Good. All right, but first up, we must discuss what surely will be the most watched women's basketball game ever, featuring all-time leading scorer versus 37-0 team. Doesn't get better than that. And Kaylin Clark did score 30 points, but only 12 of those and one three came after the first quarter as South Carolina inevitably wore down and out Iowa 87-75 to finish the season as 38-0 national champs. South Carolina predictably won the boards 51 to 29 with 18 offensive rebounds. And South Carolina's bench outscored Iowa's, you ready for this, 37 to nothing. I'll say it again, 37 to nothing. Now, Iowa did cut it to five and had the ball with four minutes left, but Cape Martin turned it over, and South Carolina closed the game on a seven to nothing run. And that was that. And afterward, let's hear what Caitlin had to say because she expressed no regret. South Carolina is just so good. Like, there's only so much you can do. I mean, Cardoso has 17 rebounds. They have 51 as a team. We have 29. Like, hard to win a basketball game like that. You basically got to shoot perfect at that point. They're a really good team. So, like, we knew they were going to go on runs. And by no means, did when we started off as hot as we did, do we think we were going to be able to hold that lead? Like, that's just what good teams do. And um, I think. If I'm not mistaken, like there's some crazy statistic where South Carolina just outscores everybody in the second half by a bunch of points every single game. True. So, Keyshawn, start us off. What exactly happened to Caitlin after that all-time great 18-point first quarter? Well, she went five for 20 from there, mm. right? You think about that. <laughs> yeah. That, that's adjustments, though. That's Don Staley and that's the defensive staff putting the, some clampers on that and saying, hey, you got your 18 in the first quarter. We're not going to allow you the rest of the game to do these sort of things. Now, she missed shots. She missed open shots. But she they did. were crowding her. They were passing her off. They was making the necessary adjustments and harassing her. Skip, look, you can't continue to go on a run the way that she has when you don't get the help from your others. And I mentioned this to, to you uh, last week when we talked about her. She's going to get hers. But everybody else, what about everybody else? Everybody else has to chip in. They chipped in against LSU. They didn't chip in against South Carolina. Okay, so that's one of the main reasons they lose this game. On top yep. of South Carolina, been there, they done it. It's a kind of somewhat of a veteran team with transfers there. And Don Staley, let's face it, she knows how to coach. She's not going to allow the things that happened against LSU and what Kim Mulkey did, like just leaving <laughs> this particular individual. And you got her. Don't, you know, you take care of her even though she's cooking for 40 plus points. And so when you make these adjustments, and this is basically what happened at the end of the day. They did a great job defensively. And, you know, partly she missed some shots, and they just never got back into a rhythm. That's the way I saw it. Okay. I think you could see the wear on her, right? So the physical wear. Okay. She is a focal point of the defense, not just yesterday, but certainly on Friday. I mean, UConn gave her, UConn gave her everything. So to have two times in, what, 45-hour period, where you have that half, much yep. physical sort mm -hmm. of beating up on you and, and people coming at you, I, I think you could see by the second half, she's four for 14. She's one of seven from three. That one of seven number, though, to me, is also about mental wear and tear. Having to be the person who carries the team, who frankly has to carry all of women's basketball is the position we put her in a little bit unfairly at this point. And knowing just from a basketball standpoint, if she doesn't catch fire, if she isn't electric, if she isn't 18 points in the third or fourth quarter, they have no chance of winning. You heard her after the game. That South Carolina team is so deep. They're so good. They have a center who is you know, nearly a foot taller than everyone else on the floor bringing those rebounds down. She would have to be superhuman for all four quarters and mentally that is just an incredible weight to carry so to me I saw her pressing 
in that yes. second half. I saw her taking some of those three-pointers, just hoping to make it up on the scoreboard. And that is the weight of someone who knows it's all on her. And by the way, it was. And she wasn't superhuman. And that's okay. The, the South Carolina team is just so exceptional. You have to look at what that team did. It is an all-new starting five. Yes. That's crazy to go undefeated, win the title, have freshmen coming off the bench to change the tide of the game for you. That is just such a complete, deep team. And key to your point, Iowa didn't have that. True. Okay. So I'm first going to correct, congratulate South Carolina because I thought they were extraordinary all year long. And this was, as Raven Johnson said after the game, the end of their revenge tour. <laughs> And I was happiest for her of all the South Carolina players because if you remember what happened in the semifinal last year, Caitlin Clark just flat out disrespected her. Mm -hmm. And she was at the top of the circle with the ball and Caitlin just backed Wait, off into the lane and just said, just go ahead, just go ahead. Remind me of what Pop used to do to LeBron <laughs> back in the day. Yes. He used to just wave and say, just let him shoot yeah. that. So here she is and she just waving at her and it crushed Raven Johnson's spirit and she said after the game or after, after last night's game that she actually thought about quitting basketball because it got so bad I still think all these these young players read their social media responses too much but it just ate her alive so this whole year for her was a revenge tour to get back to this moment and to Keyshawn's point yeah they switched off some players but for the most part I'm going to say 75 percent of the time Raven Johnson took Caitlin face to face, sort of throat to throat, here we go, and flipped the game on its head right at the end of the half when she stole the ball and went all the way down for a little layup yep. that, that suddenly I look up and I said, wait a second, South Carolina is up by three at halftime thanks to her. So I mostly congratulate her because she deserved this even more than the rest did. Mm -hmm. So the, the rest of the story was, as I said Friday, look, South Carolina is just too big for them. Yes. And Hannah Stolke played huge against LSU, and I thought she played big on Friday night, but she did not play big yesterday because, to your point, uh, it's hard to play. Wait big. a second, <laughs> uh, Cardoza. Camila Cardosa is like a foot taller than she. Is. She's actually six two to six seven, so it's five inches that she was giving up. So Hannah Stolke gets three rebounds yesterday. It's just not enough. You are going to get annihilated on the backboard and you're going to give up way too many offensive rebounds. Okay, now back to Caitlin. Three versus 17. That ain't, that it's just, it's I just a complete mismatch. That's a, correct. It's a complete mismatch. <laughs> That's a, a okay. different number. All right, so now I'm going to treat the women's game just the way I would treat the men's game because they have earned the right mm -hmm. to be criticized, if you will. Like that, this is my highest form and of regard and respect. Yes. I was disappointed in Caitlin, and I give you the tired excuse because she deserved it, because she plays 40 minutes every game. It's ridiculous because they have no bench. 37 to nothing, they got outscored. And I'm looking down the bench, and they, they went with um, fewer Bach. I, I didn't think she even played for them, and suddenly she's getting minutes because they need somebody because the two freshmen are coming in, as you point out, for South Carolina, and Tessa Johnson just raining threes. And Full Wiley just looks explosive. I'm, I'm saying, well, the, I was got nothing to deal with that. So the point was, yes, she, she wore out mentally and physically, but I just expected a little bit more because she, she, she's, she's been it all year. And I thought, okay, it is the last game. She knows it's the last game. It is, it's a tough turnaround because it's from late Friday night and they, they started at this noon out here in the but Pacific not even, time not zone. Not even the UConn game, though. Skip, you can yeah. go all the way back to a week ago, the LSU. You yeah. still had the muster up energy regardless yeah. to what LSU you beat them. Absolutely. But you still had that energy you had to get through to get to UConn from UConn to get to South Carolina. That mental fatigue over those three games. Okay, but again... Some people, many people were making the goat 